What's up you guys, welcome to my workout. Today is March 5, 2024. This is also day 24 of peptide therapy, I'm sponsored by Merrick Health. They are providing all the expertise I need as well as the peptides I'm using, but they are not paying me any cash. I'm just doing this organically and I'm reporting to you guys the results I'm getting. So right now, I stopped several days ago the subcutaneous injections here. I'm now putting them directly onto the inside of my ankles right there. And that is working much better. My ankles used to be swollen and stiff all the time and that translated up into my knees and my hips and everything else. And now they are, they are rapidly feeling better. They're still a little swollen if I'm being honest, but um, they just feel much better. And also the bunning of my big toe is not as, yeah, as cranky, although it still has a way to go. Okay, so today's my favorite exercise or one of my favorite exercises. Uh, I've renamed it the crab curl. You'll see why in a moment. Um, it's what I do as a general warm up uh, for my clients. And I like it because it opens the hips, it stretches out the inner thighs, it activates my core, connects my, my legs to my upper body, it activates my arm flexors, my traps, my neck, and then my overhead, okay? So that being said, I'm gonna get started. So this is what it looks like. <coughs> By the way, this is not meant, this is my actual workout, so it's not meant as a tutorial, an instructional, nor a recommendation uh, to do as I'm doing, because oftentimes some of the stuff I do is just dangerous or outright wrong. Okay, so take a comfortably wide stance. This is a five foot long, 30 pound bar. I'm telling you that so you don't think that I'm stronger than I am. This is not an Olympic bar, it's 30 pounds. It's also a short, snubby bar. Okay, so I comfortably wide stance, I bend my knees. Now I set the angle of my torso. So this angle that I've set, my core already is engaged, trying to keep me rigid. My weight is on the back half of my feet. I'm also trying to externally rotate my upper arms by turning the insides of my elbows outside more than I need to. Okay, so from here, I'm pretending that my hands are hooked under a, like a school desk or under a tabletop and the, the height of the bar at the starting position, it shouldn't change. So I'm gonna pull up on the bar only enough to pull myself down into the squat. As I'm doing so, I'm pushing my thighs out to the side and sliding my hips back. And then I'll finish the curl. Now I'm gonna change my grip. I'm just gonna open my fingers and then push overhead without trying to elevate my rib cage, which I have a bad habit of doing because I have uh, slightly messed up shoulders and it affects my overhead mobility. And then before I lower the bar from here, I'm gonna re make sure my knees are bent. I'm gonna re-tilt my pelvis, establish that starting torso angle. And from this position, I get a nice, long, eccentric lowering of the bar. Now, once again, pulling myself down to the bar, prying my thighs out to the side. Once I run out of space in the squat, I then finish the curl. I don't need my fingers anymore. I'm trying to actually use my core to keep my rib cage angled downwards as I push into all the restrictions in my shoulder, especially my right shoulder. Those of you who have a good eye probably already noticed that. Okay, one more time. The starting position is real important. I'm not just starting from standing up, bend the knees, slide the hips back, weight is, my weight is shifted to the back half of my feet, pushing my thighs out to the side. Also, it helps to I'm adducting, I'm squeezing inwards. I'm trying to, if you just imagine trying to display your pecs as much as you can. So like really just exaggerate the chest position and I'm actually worth putting the bar down. I'm pushing inwards as I'm curling upwards. So I'm getting this, this big activation of the body. It's very, it's very strong, okay. So once again, making sure that my pecs are 
are in front of my biceps. So I'm not gonna start here. I wanna set the pecs here, okay? Bend my knees, tilt the pelvis, got the torso angle established, squeezing inwards with my chest as I pry my thighs out to the side and I'm pulling up to bring myself down, finishing the curl. Don't need the fingers anymore. Keeping the rib cage as neutral as I can. And I'm using the muscles in, my, in the back of my shoulder blades and in between my shoulder blades to bring this 30 pound bar overhead. Okay. Um, as with all of my workouts, I didn't do, I don't do any preparation before I roll the camera other than just making sure I've set the camera so that, um, hopefully I am somewhat centered, but my warm up is always a light version of whatever it is I'm going to do. So this bar once again empty is 30 pounds i'm adding five pounds to each side i'm going to bring it up to 40 whopping pounds okay so i used to call this oh by the way okay so i used to call this an eccentric squat curl because as I'm lowering into the eccentric part of the squat I'm also curling upwards okay so I'm eccentrically lowering into my squat as I'm concentrically uh, curling the bar up to my shoulders but it's not a true curl in the sense of me just standing up and just from here doing this, okay? Um, I don't wanna get too, uh, too off to the side, so I'll, maybe I'll explain that later. Let's do one more. All right, so once again, comfortably wide stance. Bend the knees, slide the hips back, maintaining this torso angle. I'm gonna get my chest in front of my biceps, that's real important. Now I'm squeezing inwards on the chest that gives a much stronger biceps contraction from this position. Prying my thighs out to the side, pulling myself down as far to the level of the bar as I can, finishing the curl, and then and then bringing that down. Before I lower it, bend the knees, re-angle the torso so I get this nice long almost like a preacher curl lowering okay all right so and I because each rep takes so long I like this movement because I can take it's not real heavy weight but I can use many different segments or I can use my whole body to move the weight on this bar through a long distance so what it lacks in weight <coughs> it makes up for in distance traveled and that sometimes just feels better than crushing myself with heavy weight especially while I'm trying to allow my joints some time to heal and giving them giving the peptides a chance to do their thing um, for those of you who don't know the peptides I'm using are BPC 157 TB 500 500 and tesamorelin um, yeah okay so this bar now weighs 50 pounds. Ooh. Okay, so comfortably wide stance. Also, I'm making sure that my feet, one is not rotated in a different angle than the other. I try to 
try to make them nice and roughly even with each other. Okay, so once again, starting position is bend the knees, tighten midsection so that when I shift my hip backward, my weight shifts to the back of my, the back half of my feet. Now I'm gonna get my chest in front of my biceps or my biceps behind my chest and I'm gonna squeeze inwards and flex the chest. That's super important from this position. So as I'm going overhead, I'm feeling myself running out of mobility in the shoulders, kind of hitting a weak zone, which causes me to compensate. And then I feel my hip wanting to tuck under, which allows me to tilt my chest. It's a noble attempt by my body to help me do something it thinks it, I want it to do, which is to push the weight overhead. But I will limit the range of motion overhead rather than trying to force it with compensation at this point. Okay, one more time. Just trying to keep my pelvis neutral. Oh, that right side is reluctant. And if um, it would be fair if, as you watch that overhead, it would be fair if you thought it seems a little unsafe to just support a barbell overhead on just the crook of my thumb. But um, that's why I said a lot of what I do, I don't recommend because it could be dangerous. At the same time, I feel that's the optimal way for me to hold the bar without me having to, because as I'm going up overhead, my hand is, or my, I'm already externally rotated. I'm externally rotated here. As I'm going up, I'm being cranked into external rotation. So by not gripping the bar, I can accommodate that slight internal rotation as I go overhead. And it actually, I feel, allows me a safer overhead. And I'm pretty sure I'm not going to drop 50 or 60 pounds from my thumb. Okay, let's, uh, well, we'll see what happens if we go heavier. Okay, this is now a 60 pound bar. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Comfortably wide stance, rotation of the feet is symmetrical, bend the knees. Tighten the midsection, so as I pull the hips back, my weight shifts to the back half of my feet, and I'm gonna get my biceps behind my chest and squeeze inward. I'm activating, I'm activating my chest musculature at the top of this from here. Okay, as I was pressing overhead, I was blaming my shoulder, but I think I felt right in my lower back as I'm stacking the weight through. You know, it's a very long lever, obviously, so I'm, when I'm putting a weight over here, my lower back now becomes, uh, the leverage into my lower back becomes quite different and I felt it complain a little bit. And I think that's why it was trying to bail. But as long as I keep my knees slightly bent, they can accommodate that. Um, that's why I don't like to push weights overhead with my knees locked, because if I do need to make a small reactive adjustment to the hip to avoid overstressing certain parts of the the spine, um, I'm in a position to do so. All right, 
Yes, in the warm-up, it is. I don't do sets of six or eight or ten. Um, <sighs> these repetitions, you get a lot of juice from the squeeze, so doing a lot of them, to me, if one goes well, I'm just going to save that energy for the next one. All right, once again, comfortably wide stance. Bend the knees tight in the midsection. So when I angle forward, I have a rigid fixed torso angle. Biceps behind the chest, squeezing inwards on the chest, making sure that my chest is not collapsed. Okay, I'm gonna pry my thighs out as I pull myself down. And then before I lower, reset that torso angle so I get this long, protracted, eccentric lowering. Kind of feels like, sort of like a preacher curl. Okay. Okay, let's um, progress to the 25-pound plate. I want to thank Bells of Steel for sending me these clips. I have no affiliate links or any, any arrangements with them. They were just nice enough to send me these because they're thin. And on this short bar, I don't have a lot of space to put fat collars on it. So I'm now, I can now get more weight on this bar while still having a very nice clip holding it in place. All right. And I do apologize. This, these videos are never scripted. They're never planned. And so, you gotta watch me change the barbell. Let's see. Okay, so now we are up to 80 pounds. I'll be honest, um, God, I haven't done this in a while, so this is, 80 and up is where this starts to feel, don't do what I just did, that's not good for your back. Um, 80 pounds and up is where this starts to get a little heavy for me. Um, oh, fuck it. Let's just go. All right. So, uh, okay. Oh, that's right. I'm telling you it's a little heavy because the exercise is going to look the same, but the way it's going to treat me, the way it's going to feel is going to be quite different. We'll see. All right. So here we go. Bend my knees. Once again, bend my knees, pressurize my core, tilt back here, get my biceps in front, of, behind my chest, squeezing my chest, getting as tall in the spine as I can. Yep. Now, for a lot of you, an 80 pound barbell curl is not a big deal. And if that's the case for you, then good for you. Um, what makes this kind of interesting for me is my, what I'll loosely refer to as a receding platform. So, let me give an example. 
a rigid platform like this where everything is locked up. I'm rigid. I'm fully, I'm fully rigid. I can do that feels much easier than what I'm about to do. Okay. But when I am trying to curl, I guess I'll give the analogy of jumping in sand. That's a common analogy. So as, as I'm trying to exert energy upwards into the bar, but I'm simultaneously descending downwards into a squat. And as I'm in order for me to, to descend into the squat, my torso angle has to change. As my torso angle changes, the leverage that I have goes from here to here. And one of the reasons why people like to do the preacher curl so much is because that, that preacher bench, it positions you in a way where, in a way it reduces your leverage, but allows you, which forces the biceps to have to work a little harder. In a way, it kind of, I guess, isolates them. When you're here, we have all of this rigidity, and out here, also we have a different position. So, I'm not making excuses, I'm just, I'm just uh, explaining why I am weak when I do this. You might be super strong, and, <clears throat> and I really, I hope you are. Okay, so this is 90 pounds. This one, <clears throat> I'm gonna probably have to cheat it a little bit because uh, it's heavy. Okay, here we go. This starting platform, making sure my chest is set. This is real important. All right, here we go. Feel kind of heavy. All right. Let's give a hundred pounds a go. Right now, while I'm my primary goal right now for the next few weeks is to allow the peptides whatever chance I can give them to try and fix my many injuries and conditions. So um, I don't want to load too heavy, but at the same time for the last three days, I've been going super light and I just feel like today's a good day to just test something moderately heavy. So, let's see. All right. I'm standing on a, almost a four degree slope here. That's why I have to keep doing all this nonsense with the barbell. Otherwise it'll just roll away and I'll have to go get it. All right. Here we go. It's not a safe way to pick up a barbell. Don't do that. All right. Starting position. I'm going to pause. Two reasons. I wasted way too much setting up there. I know it's just 100 pounds, but for me, 
every fraction of a second counts once I put that bar on me. And then I was also distracted by those nice ladies behind me. Um, no problem with them, you know, but my mind wasn't focused. So I'm sorry you have to wait for this, but I think I'm ready. Okay, let's try. Here we go. I felt pretty heavy. <clears throat> yeah, I think that was, uh, I think that was good. All right, um, <laughs> believe it or not, that's it. Because honest, honestly, if whether I'm videotaping this or not, this is literally, literally how it goes for me. I just need to take a moment to clarify one thing. I built my foundation. I started doing this when I was eight years old. And then in my teens, my 20s, my 30s, my 40s, I did tons of deadlifts. But most, oh, actually barbell squats. For me, barbell squats was everything. And then secondarily, deadlift. But to me, the barbell squat was, everything didn't do much bench pressing ever as you can tell um power cleans pull-ups overhead presses tons of that i'm telling you that because that's what i built my foundation on i'm 55 now i have low testosterone low growth hormone pre-diabetic and a lot of things going on. I have injuries. And I've been doing, I've been going hard on social media since 2020 when we locked down. So my body is just starting to, you know, so I'm just doing enough to just maintain and just kind of keep everything in place. But right now, while I'm trying to repair and fix myself, I am not trying to gain necessarily in anything. You know, so just letting you know that if I don't want you guys to think that this is all you need to do to get whatever, whatever it is you want. This is what I do just to kind of keep myself where I am given my current health status. And that's another thing, like despite what people look like, I'm making these videos so that you guys know that looks are deceiving. You know, I just told you what health issues I have and in other videos I've talked about other ones. So for me, this is all I can take. It's all I can recover from and still be able to do something tomorrow. Okay, so just being truthful. If you're still here, I appreciate you. Thank you for being here. I hope some of this was helpful and uh, much aloha.